yes, Goose here. I know what you're thinking. Why has Goose come as Boy George today? Well, it's not Boy George. Well, I, let me just tell you about this hat. Um, I was asked to play three Jimi Hendrix songs last year at a festival in France. Unfortunately, the gig was cancelled because of COVID, but I got this hat commissioned um, by my good friend, uh, Max, who's a great artist, musician in his own right, but he makes hats for people like Erica Badu, and he's had exhibitions in the v and Museum. I'm gonna put his details in the description, check him out, he makes amazing hats, and he makes amazing music as well. Okay, so this video is all about a Steve Ray Vaughan guitar. We're gonna find out how to do that, and we're gonna, you know, just have a little bit basic chat. This is part one. Part two will be you seeing the guitar actually made. Um, but this, this part one is just talking about strats and I'll show you a few things I've collected to make this guitar. So first of all, um, I'm gonna put in the description all the measurements that um, you can obtain from Dan Erlewin's great book, um, Guitar Repair, which was a guitar player published book, which is really, really great. In that book, he actually had access to the number one um, from C. Ray Vaughan. Because that is a guitar we're kind of loosely basing our design on. Now, some of those measurements are quite important, like the, um, the, the compounded neck radius. So just reading what Dan discovered, he says um, it was subtly, a subtle compounded neck from seven and a quarter inch here, ending up at 12 inches at the fret fingerboard end. That was mainly because Rene Martinez refretted Stevie's number one guitar so many times it kind of ended up like that. Um, but we don't have to worry about that. What I would suggest is get a compound, compound radius neck if that's what you want, or get something that you like, maybe a 10 inch radius or 9.5 inch radius. It's whatever works for you. Because that is the main sort of thing I wanna to give to you guys is what is the most important thing building a Fender Steve Ray Vaughan style guitar. For me, it's to play the music, okay? So say for example. Yeah, if I can't play that effectively on the instrument, it's no good. It doesn't matter if it's perfectly relict. It's got the gold hardware. Who cares? Because I can't play. You know, say for example, what, what's one of the most hardest songs for me to play in the Steve Ray Vaughan repertoire is... So what we've got there is bending and vibrating after you've bent the string. So just literally that. Now, these strings are 11s tuned to E, okay? Very important. The most important thing, one of the most important things is the string gauge. So I can really easily play this guitar with all these crazy bends in E using 11s, which my, uh, some people may struggle with, I'm not saying everyone will struggle with that, but some guys struggle playing 11s in E, okay? So that's why a lot of guys that actually play C. Ray Vaughan style material, and wear these silly hats and cowboy boots, um, they actually play an E flat and 11s, because they don't have the strength in their hands to play 11s in E, and that doesn't matter, it's, it's, it's not a competition. Okay? It just means you've got to get a string gauge which works for you. That's the main thing. Now, if I ha only had one Stratocaster, I would not want to be playing any flat because that would alienate me playing with other musicians and also, you know, just make my life a nightmare. So what I want to do is have one guitar in E flat where I can play the Steve Ray Vaughan material and it's kind of, I can just use it for that. Jimi Hendrix, you know. play the Jimi Hendrix material and the Steve Ray Vaughan material and I've got that E flat instrument just for that because I love to do that you know I love to play Jimi and Stevie's music 
So how are we going to go about this? Well, I'm not going to be interested in the relicking and making it look like Stevie Ray Vaughan's guitar. I mean, you know, that's not going to help me play Texas Floods bends. It's not going to help me at all. The look of it is going to not affect the tone or the playing whatsoever. The tone comes from the fingers and the brain. 1% comes from your actual instrument, okay? Just remember that. 1% of your tone is from the instrument and the amp, and 99% is from here, here and our soul. So that's one thing to bear in mind. So these beautiful gold tuners, which I'm going to install on the headstock, are not going to help me in the slightest iota to achieve Stevie's playing style or tone. Okay, but I digress. So string gauges are really important because I want to play a heavy strings in E flat. So 11s in E is probably like 13s in E flat, same tension. However, I'm going to probably tune mine to 12, have a 12 on the top. So let's just have a look at Steve Ravon's string gauge. It was 13, 15, 19, plain 20, sorry, a plain 19, 28, 38, and 58 on the bass, okay? So we've got 58, big, big fat bass string. Well, I actually don't like fat bass strings, I, you know, because my twin brother is an incredible bass player. I don't want to take up his, you know, frequency range. I don't need to, he's got that more than covered. So generally, I use a 48. Okay, unless I'm playing jazz guitar, then it's a different thing. Um, but however, on this guitar, we're going to go full Stevie. So we're going to we're going to put a 58 on the bass. 38 and 28 is kind of like it's strange because you've got such a, 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 a thick bass string, but then you're going to a 38, which is moderately thin on the A, which is interesting. Um, we've got plain 19, which it's not going to be hard to bend. 15, that's going to be easy to bend an E flat. And 13, well, I'm going to change that 13 to a 12, like I said, and that's going to make it a bit easier. Um, and uh, so that might be the way you want to take it if you're playing an E flat and you're used to playing in, in E. But that's not, don't worry if you want to go to a set of 11s in E flat, because maybe you're playing 10s in E and you don't want to, you know, give your hand an ache, you know. Um, so you might want to go ten, um, 11s in E flat. That might work for you. It's not a race, it's not a competition. <clears throat> so, that said, another thing that's going to really help us, on all my guitars I put 6100 fret wire. So that's really my secret. How do I play 11s in E? Two, I'm going to give you two secrets. Low action and big frets. Now, if we're playing Steve Ray Vaughan, we want to have the opposite. We want to have high action, okay? Because the secret to Steve Ray Vaughan's tone was not low action, it was slightly high action, okay? So those measurements you're gonna get from Dan Erlewin in my description in this video, so check them out. We're gonna have six, so this is a neck that I actually got made for me. And this this neck was made 10 years ago, okay? Um, because 10 years ago I had the bright idea to make a Steve Ray Vaughan tribute guitar, a style guitar for my Steve Ray Vaughan style, um, Hendrix. I never ever got around to, to finishing it. So I had this neck made, and now only now I'm actually going to sort this out and, and put this guitar together. But this guitar lived on my Cuda caster, so it was used for slide guitar. So it's never actually used for what it was supposed to be used for. But on here we've got Brazilian rosewood. Now why do I like Brazilian rosewood? I like it because it's glassy and it enables me to bend the strings. Okay, If you can't get hold of Brazilian rosewood, this is Honduras rosewood, which is pretty similar. Um, and that's got that nice glassy feel to it as well. Or you might want to use some oils. If you've got Indian rosewood, use some oils and get it so it's nice and polish it up so it's nice and glassy. That's really important, for me anyway. And we've got these Jim Dunlop 6100 fret wire. So um, that's another thing. Okay, so this is a, what you call a slab board, I guess. If I'm right, it's not veneer, it's a slab board. Nice chunky bit of Brazilian rosewood. We've got clay dots if you want to get um, vintage specific. It's got a flame maple maple neck here. And this here is very much an unfinished, it's just got a bit of oil in there, an unfinished neck. So that's something else you might want to want to have on your guitar. I like I like it to be unfinished. The only problem with this is it might be dangerous. It can get moisture in it and then it can warp and then you're literally your neck can be useless. You have to chuck it away. So be careful. Um, maybe put some gun oil or something in this wood to protect it. And I think I need to do that myself. Or a light spray of nitrocellulose can also help. So that is really the guitar. Now this has been drilled to receive these fancy 
tuners. See that? These are called Fender Shallow Elite. I had the bright idea, I don't have many bright ideas, but I had the bright idea to buy four sets of these back 10 years ago because I like them. And I have these on my jazz guitar, I have them on my, my Kudacasters, and I had a, a spare set because these are missing the actual pegs, so I've got to get some pegs for these. But these will actually live on this guitar. Now, do they make any difference to the tone? No, none whatsoever. Or if they did, it's so insignificant compared to what's in here and here that you know it's neither here nor there. But you can get some. Uh, you can get any kind of gold tuner with a pearl top, which will kind of make it look nice because that's what Steve Everyone had later in his career on this. He's number one. Now let's talk about neck thickness. Do you need a thick neck like Steve Ray Vaughan? Because purportedly, um, the number one <coughs> Steve Ray Vaughan guitar had a thick neck. So, so should you get a thick neck? Is that important? No, not at all. Because we come back to the same rule again. What is the most important thing is the fact that you can play um, the style of music um, that you want to play. So for example, the reason I like a thick neck is because I have big palms and I need to do these bends, okay? so. Again, we're talking about this kind of... No, so what I need is I need a bit of wood, which is what this one was made for. It was made with a bit of wood here so that I can cut my palm and I can get my thumb over the neck and really bend on finger bends. That's really important, it's that thickness for me. Now you may have half the size palms than me, okay? And you need thin, you want a thin neck. There's, not, there's no problem whatsoever. Because, like I said, the main thing is that you can play the music. If I'm playing something like. So if I'm playing something like that, who cares if I've got a thick neck or a fat neck just because Steve Ray Vaughan had a bigger neck? It doesn't matter. It's got to work for you. The main thing is how you play this instrument. But I will say that, you know, if, if you do have a bit of wood and it's not covered in polyurethane la lacquer, that kind of plastic stuff, it's going to resonate, you know, and, and you're going to get uh, some tone, some tonage from, you know, this bare wood almost, you know. So that can help in the tone. But the main thing is the big frets, tuning to E flat, um, some nice glassy rosewood there, and that's that's all that matters. The size is just a personal preference. So that's our guitar neck, and that's really 99% of the guitar is your guitar neck, because the body. Who cares about the body? Yeah, it can be resonant. I mean, you know, it could be dark um, sounding. It could be light sounding. You know, you can kind of fix that with the pickups. Because here we go again. Do the pickups matter? Well, the pickups, there's no point getting, well, I mean, I'm going to put maybe the readings and, and the settings of, of Zero Everyone's height. But again, if you set your pickups and have the same readings and the same height, is your guitar going to sound like Zero Everyone's? No, of course not, because that guitar is dialed into the piece of wood. If, you're, if your wood is heavy, and thick, and dense, then you might want to go with a really um, underwound set of um, pickups. But if your body is very lightweight and uh, thin sounding, you might want to go with some beefier pickups, you know. So again, this is all something you need to tweak. Now I've found my dream three pickups, although this one has only got two pickups. But for my Sea Ray Vaughan tribute guitar, I will put three pickups in. And I will put my ESP Custom Labs in the neck, because that's my favourite pickup in the world for the neck. And in the bridge, I'll just put any old pickup, but I'll put a base plate, a zinc base plate on it, and earth, earth that, because that's how I like. I like a Telecaster style pickup in the bridge. It's just my preference. I just play much better when I have that. Um, you know, so I just give you an example of the sound, which is this is, which this is off. Let's just go for it. And I always take my tone down a little bit. So that's another little mod I will do is put my tone on the on the bridge pickup. So if I was playing, for example, you know, I really like that kind of bridge play on that bridge pickup to get those kind of Hendrixy 
sort of tones. So again, that's going to be something which you're going to um, look out for. So if you're going to build this guitar with me, I hope you are, because it's going to be a great fun project. Um, you know, we can see what the outcome is going to be. You can see what the outcome of my guitar is going to be in part two. Hope this is going to be interesting for you. But don't don't forget, you can if you've got any um, questions about it, you know, um, fire me a question. But the main thing, like I said, is just getting a neck. And how you're going to get the neck is really just by trial and error and maybe trying a few necks, get the measurements. You might want to go to your local luthier, you know, which is a really great fun thing to do. Go to your local guy in the workshop and say, can you build me a neck? And this is what I want in the neck, you know, um, this nut width, okay? Very important, your nut width. Make the neck a little bit bigger and don't finish it so that when the neck's made, you can, you can put your hand around it and say, yeah, can you take it down a little bit here and a little bit there? You know, get it made for your hand. It's, you've, you're the one that's playing the Steve Ray Vaughan licks or the Hendrix licks, you know, Steve Ray Vaughan's not playing them for you and, and the guitar's not playing them for you. You've got to play it. So the neck has got to work for your hand, okay? And you know that because you've played lots of guitars. So you know what necks you like. You know, don't get stuck into this thing where it's got to look like Jimi Hendrix's guitar and it's got to, you know, it's got to have this bit of relicking here on the headstock and it's got to have these tuners. That's really not, not where we go coming from. That's not where I'm coming from making this, this guitar. So think about the colour as well. I'm going to make mine gold because I want to make a, a copy of Bob's guitar. I really like that guitar. I think it's going to be a fun thing to do. Or I might make it blue. If I can't get a gold body, I'll, I'll get a blue body. You know, but I'm not interested in the you know the black pit guard with SRV on it. No, that's almost like people that wear hats, cowboy hats, you know, and make videos about Ciro Vaughan's guitars. It's nearly as bad as that. So guys, I hope to see your Ciro Vaughan copy guitars soon. And uh, God bless, and see you in part two. Take care.